Hi guys, Sean over here from Team Xbox over at Microsoft. We're comparing the Surface Pro X versus the iPad Pro. Now, full disclosure, I'm not part of the Surface team, so these reviews and impressions are strictly my own. And I'm neither part of the Apple hardware engineering team as well, so these reviews, these user case scenarios, these opinions are all defined which device were specs for you. So, the Surface Pro X sports the biggest redesign in Surface Pro line since the Surface Pro 4 and it's running Windows on ARM on Microsoft's custom SQ1 chip, which means it's bringing desktop, a traditionally heavy OS, onto the mobile front to get all the benefits, like LTE and better battery life and fanless design. Whereas the iPad Pro recently had a revamp in its OS to introduce a file system, better multitasking, and better optimization of the screen flow for iPads. So in one case, a desktop OS bring it to the mobile front, and in another case, an optimized iOS ecosystem trying to make that more productive. We're going to break it down to a couple categories, design, productivity, and entertainment. So let's talk about design. The Surface Pro X design has a kickstand, a removable hard drive that you can add, eject with the tool in the back, two speakers on front, thinner bezels this year, and two USB-C ports and the Surface Adapter port, whereas the iPad has one USB-C connector and some pins to connect the keyboard and smaller bezels as well. Overall, I'd say the Surface Pro X comes out on top with the better design because of the beloved kickstand and also the implementation of the Surface Pro X keyboard that has better pen placement because it puts it in the keyboard itself to not only charge it, but to keep it there nice and tucked away Whereas the Surface Pro has the magnetic latch of the pen that is streamlined by design, but it can still detach or you can lose it in your book bag. And in the Surface Pro X's case, like Unbox Therapy said, why haven't they thought about this before? Both of them have a premium finish, but given the thinness of the Surface Pro X, the included keyboard, and the better thoughtful process of the pen placement, double USB-Cs, the design is better on the Pro X. Now let's talk about screen quality. Both of them support a 260 plus PPI. Wide color gamuts, image production is beautiful. It's a testament to the Surface line to be able to produce images as beautiful as the liquid retina display on the iPad Pro. So I would say in terms of image quality, both are pretty equal. Where the iPad Pro comes out ahead is the screen ProMotion. So that's up to 120 Hertz refresh rate to show off your games or when you're reading turn down the refresh rate to be smart about it to optimize it for battery life windows on arm is great to extend the battery life but you're still getting roughly 8 to 11 hours of battery life on windows on arm because it's emulating a lot of apps and the ecosystem hasn't yet been optimized for every single app things like edge or chrome are not yet optimized for arm and we hope they come out whereas on the ipad everything's been optimized because you had to build it from the app store and you that's the only way you can download apps on there so they've mandated this optimization so the screen quality is better on the, the ipad pro now let's talk about media consumption so chances are on the ipad or your iphone you're using the native youtube app and youtube is a staple of video consumption on the Pro X, unfortunately, you have to go through Chrome, which is emulated by Times86 apps, and go to the website and click through there. Now, it's not that painful, but it's just more streamlined, more comfortable to use, and just looks better, has more native support on the iPad ecosystem, even on the Android ecosystem for, say, Android phones. Those would rather go through the native Google YouTube apps, and it's not Microsoft's fault per se, YouTube P apps haven't been that supported and Google doesn't have a native YouTube app. Even further, things like Amazon Prime, Prime Video, Disney Plus will all have native apps when it launches for the iPad Pro or the Apple ecosystem. And for UWP P apps, Netflix is the one that's supported. So overall video consumption, the experience goes towards the iPad Pro. Even things like the stereo speakers to listen to your movies or music. The Surface Pro X has very loud speakers, but the iPad Pro just has four um, speakers, omnidirectional speakers. It's more well-adjusted, more stereoscopic sound. It sounds fuller. 
fuller, more accurate, better basses versus Surface Pro X's loud speakers. Let's talk about productivity. Did you know that the Surface Pro X can power two 4K displays? Think about it when you go to work and look around. Most of your coworkers will probably be running a Windows PC that plugs in and has multiple displays. Take a look and do you see anyone that has an iPad that's running multiple displays? You don't. In this case, the Surface Pro X wins in terms of productivity because it can power up to two 4K displays, has two USB-C ports to make that happen, or even has a Surface adapter and the Surface dock to make dual displays. The iPad, though, is used more signaled as a secondary device. Things like Apple Sidecar make the iPad a great additional display for your MacBook, but we're talking about bringing, making the iPad a productive central device. The iPad Pro can power external monitors, but even so, or not all their apps yet, support multi-Windows functions as natively as Windows does. Windows just has much more history here in terms of optimizing different Windows and apps and screens and monitors, whereas the iPad Pro just finally had USB-C to support 4K monitors. And even so, once you plug it in, you're gonna have to pair a mouse or a keyboard, and it just started to introduce the mouse, or you're gonna have to have that, whereas your Surface Type Cover will already have a mouse and keyboard good to go, ready for you to use. And if you plug in an external display for your iPad, mainly it's for mirroring. Otherwise, how do you interact with it if you don't have your own external um, Bluetooth device because the monitor you have won't be able to have touch by default. All in all, I'm just saying that multi-window use on iPads is growing. It's just getting started and it hasn't yet been optimized. Whereas optimization for multi windows on Windows just supersedes it. Now, speaking of Office 365 and Office apps, this is where I give credit to the iPad line for catching up very well and the Office 365 team for making the Microsoft and PowerPoint apps virtually the same. Because when you use Office on the Pro X, you can save files, but if you're like me, you want to avoid local storage as much as possible and bring it to the cloud and credits to the iPad OS operating system because you can integrate OneDrive natively into the cloud OS so you can make a document and from Microsoft Word, a .next, .docx native document and save that to the cloud, your OneDrive. And the same thing on the historical Windows PC where it was built, OneDrive support as well for the apps. Where the Surface Pro X comes out ahead in Office Suite is Excel, because if you talk to any finance junkie who is used to the Windows shortcuts and keyboards, they'll use Excel and have be able to run more native support for their larger files. Now, with the Pro X, you have to get the upgraded version to be able to run heavy files, but on the iPad Pro, it's just not the same with all the keyboard support in terms of getting those heavy excels running but for everything else word and powerpoint i would say they're virtually the same where it was a home run for the surface line pro x and the windows ecosystem it's pretty much equal and if anything it's amazing to see the strides that office suite has made on the ipad os and one more area that the surface pro x is more productive is just using the native file system now ipad os has made strides in the file OS system but Things like sending an attachment in an email. Chances are you're using Gmail, and if you're using on the Pro X, you're going to open Chrome, Gmail, attach a file, say it's in your recent downloads folder, boom, connected and sent. If it's the iPad OS and you open the native Gmail app, it doesn't have support for the native file system, whatever you saved, in your, and however you want to organize it, say your local iPad storage. It doesn't have access to make that an attachment to a file, only things like your recent photos. You're gonna have to use a native mail app, the mail client on the iPad, in order to access the file system on the iPad. Whereas on the Pro X, even if you're using Gmail Online and Chrome or using Outlook, the desktop native app there, it all by default has access to the file system. So in that case, the Surface Pro X is a more productive device because of the multi-window support. Office Suite capabilities and traditional window shortcuts, things like Alt Tab switching, Control L, you know, Control T, things like that. Those fast shortcuts, whereas the iPad OS is designed for more finger touches rather than keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so let's move on to the camera. Camera, easily the iPad Pro, because when's the last time you've FaceTime family? Probably very recently, versus whatever default app there is for video chatting on Surface Pro X. 
it's pretty non-existent in terms of having a default one. You're either using Facebook Messenger, Teams, or Skype. Those things aren't as mainstream now as, say, WeChat on mobile, FaceTime, or Snapchat or Instagram video. The cameras on the iPad Pros are simply better than the Pro X. Okay, now let's talk about games. On the iPad Pro, you're looking for games that are natively built from the App Store and optimized, so you're happy and delighted for what games are available on the iPad. The Pro X, I feel, has a double standard because you expect it to run every single game on Steam and you get upset when you find games that you can't run. And in many ways, it's an optimization factor again. I would say the iPad Pro succeeds in terms of allowing games through and communicating that, hey, features like Apple Arcade will work on all our Apple devices, and here is a collection of games that you can play, and they all work pretty well, especially on the newest hardware. Whereas this Surface Pro X struggles because it's Windows on ARM, it's struggling with emulation, you have access to some apps on the App Store which you can install or play, and you have to get the most upgraded device to run it the games well, and sometimes you get wonky behavior, and things like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate are for Windows, but for stronger Windows PC devices with, say, discrete graphics cards, but the overall experience of casual games goes better for the iPad Pro, and it's ProMotion 120Hz, again, with optimization and developer support, whereas Windows has to wait either for Windows UWP games apps on there, or just figuring out how to optimize ARM more. Now, in terms of perceived speed, the 120Hz will make a difference, making like the iPad look faster, have faster multitasking. It feels and runs like butter. Whereas the Pro X, I feel hiccups a couple times in terms of multitasking because either running emulation software or finding apps and honestly just trying to use multitasking functions, it's not a, a seamless communication between Windows OS and the hardware that Surface Pro X has on it in the same way that Android on tablets isn't as optimized. Apple just has it faster and more optimized and more supported with developers. Okay, so all in all, the Surface Pro X wins on things like design and productivity, whereas the iPad Pro is a better video and media consumption device and overall has a buttery and smoother ecosystem more aimed at the casual use. So if you're a productivity user, go to the Pro X. And if you're a casual, more mainstream user, or for those who don't need to run Teams or Power BI or legacy apps, I would say the iPad Pro still edges the Pro X out, mobile chip to mobile chip, optimization is what makes it win a mobile operating system built from the apple a12 chip up versus trying to port a heavy desktop app onto a mobile chip the results speak for themselves so all right guys that's what our thoughts do you agree disagree which device do you think is more productive which do you think is more the entertainment device these are my thoughts let me know in the comments below thanks for supporting our channel and we'll see you in the next video bye guys